There's little doubt that in the 1950s, the legendary race into the space began when the United States of America and the Soviet Union shifted their strong competition into space. And while both sides attempted to gain supremacy in space, work had to be done to underpin the scientific power of each in its respective states. As a result, this heated battle raged for a while, until the race to launch the first satellite into orbit was won by Sputnik 1 giving Yuri Gagarin the honor of being the first man in space. However, as you know, the story doesn't end here, as a journey to the moon was still in the minds of people all over the world. Thus, with Apollo 11's landings on the moon in 1969 and Neil Armstrong's famous walk on the moon, the USA was finally able to show itself as the true winner in all these space races. Although the Soviets fell behind America in space races, and while the USA arrogantly proclaimed its victory over the Soviets, they conducted thorough research on Venus and even took photographs with probes of its surface. So you guessed it right, today we will be addressing these unearthly Soviet photographs from Venus, its rich history and the technology that led to its creation. Therefore, buckle up, because it's gonna be a wild ride. Well, it is no secret that Venus has been regarded as the brightest star in the firmament since prehistory, and as such, has always received special attention, regardless of whether it was the Maya or Mesopotamian cultures of the ancient Greeks. And thus, Venus has always held an important place in their observations of the sky. As a fun fact, the first person to observe Venus in all her phases and tracked its course was Galileo Galilei, a man who probably requires little introduction. Hence, curiosity continued to be present in the 1600s, and with increasingly better observation capabilities over the centuries, various events took place on Venus, such as the transit of Venus in front of the Sun. However, none of these investigations could satisfy the people's intrigue. Therefore, it is not surprising that space probes have continued to explore Venus to this day. Similarly, the Soviets and Americans both sent probes to Venus at the same time as early as 1961, with the Soviets sending their first probe, Venera 1, towards Venus. The main purpose of the expedition was to learn more about Venus, and it was even once considered Earth's twin by astronomers and science fiction writers dreamed of advanced life under Venus's clouds. But despite high hopes for Venera 1, unfortunately it lost contact with the Earth too soon and could not be considered a success. Yet, it is known to be one of the first objects to be considered a spacecraft since it met all necessary conditions, including solar propulsion and the ability to change direction. While the Soviets may have been the first to enter Venus's atmosphere, but the first accurate measurements of Venus were made by the Americans, with their probe Marina 2 which showed that the atmosphere of Venus has a temperature of about 500 degrees Celsius. Even so, it wasn't possible for the probe to reach the surface and it just passed by the orbit. But its observations revealed a hot, high-pressure planet on which unbroken clouds cover the surface. In the meantime, Venera 3 was the first probe to reach a foreign planet's surface, but in the end it crashed during the landing and could not transmit any data. Although Venera 4 through 6 were able to transmit data from the atmosphere, but still could not reach the surface. Essentially, landing on Venus wasn't easy, as it took several years and quite a bit of money for the first probe to successfully land on Venus in December 1970. So, having used the combined efforts of multiple years of trials, the Soviet probe Venera 7 was able to successfully land on Venus and even maintain contact with Earth for 23 minutes. Well, you might not be impressed by this number, but the planet has an atmosphere filled with pressure and can crush unshielded probes within a matter of seconds. Therefore, it's amazing that the probe lasted 23 minutes. After that, the Soviet Union launched their next successful landing mission on Venus with Venera 8, which was able to collect important data on Venus's surface temperature, which was 455 degrees Celsius. Interestingly, 50 degrees lower than the flyby American droid. Additionally, they were able to gather air pressure and other temperature profiles as well. And guess what? With a photometer, indications of clouds were even found on Venus, as well as with a gamma steel spectrograph. The composition of the planet's crust was even determined, but still no pictures of Venus were transmitted, as it was only after all this back and forth and years of trial and error that on 22nd October 1975, the first pictures of Venus were taken using the probe Venera 9, which entered the orbit of Venus, making it the first artificial satellite on a foreign planet with cameras and spectrometers. 
and using these additions, pictures of rocky landscapes were taken. Moreover, it turned out that the clouds on Venus are stacked three to six layers above each other, and even a digital video was transmitted to Earth, consisting of a now ridiculous six bits per pixel. So the poor transmission ensured that only a few images could convey any meaningful information. Even subsequent post-processing by Brown University was unable to significantly improve quality. And at roughly the same time, the sister probe Venera 10 landed on Venus with a payload that covered the planet in panoramic images. Even with a malfunction on one camera, the overall pictures received were much better and were, therefore, of much greater value. Nevertheless, the pictures taken at this point were only in black and white. So the two Soviet probes, Venera 11 and 12, were equipped with color cameras when they landed on Venus in December 1978. However, it was not possible to create and transmit color photos as the cameras were not able to withstand the high pressure of the atmosphere and can no longer function. Thus, there was great hope when Venera 13 was launched to Venus in 1982. It is no wonder that Venera 13 remained operational for an incredible 127 minutes on the surface of Venus and transmitted color images, making Venera 13 a technological ingenuity again, as it became the first lander to send images in color from the surface of Venus. Consequently, Venera 13 safely touched down in an area that the Lunar and Planetary Institute described as typical of the Venusian planes on 1st of March 1982. Furthermore, a Science News article published on March 20th reported that the landing site appeared rough but broken and covered with debris of various sizes around the lander itself. And according to US researchers studying these photos, the smooth areas in the images may be solid slabs of rock or may consist of fine particles cemented together by chemical activity in the atmosphere. Alternatively, they could have weathered from the underlying bedrock or come from the dust blown by the wind. So even though other landers arrived before and after Venera 13, its pictures are more widely circulated since it's in color. Further, the color images from the spacecraft are widely used in books, magazine articles, and websites about Venus. Additionally, the pictures only include a small portion of the sky in the corners and concentrate on the surface in front. Not only were the pictures taken at a high resolution, but they were also taken in a very scenic manner in which the spacecraft was visible at the bottom along with a discarded lens cover. As well, in some versions of Venus's surface appear to be yellow, but scientists say it is difficult to determine the true color of Venus's surface as the clouds block out blue light. Venera 13 extended a drilling arm to the surface, picked up a small piece of Venusian soil and analyzed it. And the interesting thing was that, during the drilling process, the spacecraft tracked parameters such as the depth reached and the speed of the drill rig to understand the surface's physical properties. Moreover, the spacecraft was originally designed to last about half an hour on the harsh surface of Venus, yet it ended up transmitting data for more than two hours after its landing on 1st March 1982. Initially, this discovery was so defying that engineers on the ground celebrated with drinks as the data they received from Venus was so much greater than expected, so they no longer needed to send probes to Venus for a while. So, in honor of this milestone, a mock-up of the Venera 13 spacecraft was exhibited at the Cosmos Pavilion at the exhibition of the achievements of the national economy in Moscow, Russia. But now you might be wondering, all of these ordeals happened several decades ago, but why are we only seeing these photos now? Well, that's because of the secrecy that surrounded the Soviet Union. As a result, documentation on the Venera program is sparse. Essentially, the former Soviet Union was formerly known as the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics at the time, and it was the predecessor to what is known today as Russia and its neighbors. And as time passed, the Union disintegrated into independent states in 1991. However, unlike the United States' public space program, the Soviet Union preferred to keep information about its space flights confidential until it felt the time was right to announce them. As it turned out, it kind of works as their secret weapon, since the Western world was shocked when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik on October 4, 1957. Moreover, only a few Americans realized the Soviets had the capability of sending satellites into space at the time. In other words, the launch of Sputnik ignited a space race at the time between the United States and the Soviet Union, which was raging with Cold War tensions. Yet, you would be hard-pressed to discover that the Soviets also kept plans for other achievements under wraps until they were achieved. And the prominent examples include the previously mentioned Yuri Gagarin's flight into space on 12th of April 1961. 
and Alexei Leonov's first spacewalk on 18th March 1965. But this belongs to the past, since over time, American astronauts and Soviet cosmonauts became friends and shared information. Moreover, the two nations also made a symbolic space mission together in 1977, called the Apollo-Soyuz Test Project. In addition, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia became a partner of the International Space Station ISS, and supplied several of its modules, as well as cargo services and Soyuz spacecraft for both American and Russian astronauts. And currently, Russian information about the ISS is shared with international partners, including the United States. So now that the US and Russia are no longer rivals, what are the prospects after the Venus mission? Well, since Venera 13's massive success, the European Space Agency's Venus Express orbited the planet between 2006 and 2014 before deliberately ejecting itself into the planet's atmosphere. As of early 2019, the Japanese Akatsuki mission is studying Venus's climate and atmosphere. As well, NASA and Russian space agency Roscosmos have been talking about a follow-up Venus landing mission called Venera D that could last months on the planet's surface. Hopefully then, this mission will also provide us with more information, which can bring humanity closer to understanding a little bit more about this vast universe. Having said that, now that we have come to an end of this video, please let us know in the comment section what do you think about these mystical photographs on Venus? And do you believe that our recent progress has slowed? Well, you'll have to take your time with this one. So let us know how it goes. Thanks for the support, viewers. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever new videos are uploaded. Plus, share the videos as much as you can, because the more you know, the more you grow. So, we've concluded today's video, but if you want to see more, there's one on your screen now, and we're bringing you more great videos about everyday technology soon. See you soon in the next one. Until then, peace.